Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and X2, X-Men United, joined the warring sides of mutant kind to fight the real enemy, us. Well, not just us, US America, with an ever-expanding cast of mutants that Wolverine tells to go f themselves. Kurt Wagner. But in the Munich circus, I was known as the incredible nightcrawler. F yourself. After breaking down the first X-Men, let us now re-examine the sequel for all the interesting Easter eggs you might overlook. Because folks, both Deadpool and a couple of Avengers make cameos here. But there's also a ton of easy to miss filmmaking details that are just really fun to talk about. Okay, after again opening with the X of the Fox logo lingering a bit longer, we open in outer space with a humanoid shape and a fiery inner glow, the Phoenix Force, making her way to Jean Grey. Charles is talking about mutants replacing humanity, though he doesn't realize an even more evolved Omega level higher form is approaching to replace even him. A White House tour guide quotes Lincoln from the Brink of America's last civil war right before another one's about to begin. We are not enemies, but friends. Though passion may have strained, it must not break the bonds of our affection. This guide is actually a cameo by Jubilee voice actor from X-Men Evolution, Chiara Zani. Lincoln, like the portrait nightcrawler mirrors JFK, both these presidents infamously were assassinated. Just a little dark American history to start the tension here. This amazing opening attack is Senator Kelly's worst case scenario. A girl in Illinois who can walk through walls. Now what's to stop her from walking into the White House? But unlike the iconic White House attack from Superman 2, the point of view here has been reversed from the attackers to the victims. The first X-Men was almost exclusively through the eyes of the mutants from the outside looking in. But X2 shifts the point of view to that of the humans on the inside who now look helpless and terrified. From Charles's opening words, this film is all about fear. Mutants, since the discovery of their existence, they have been regarded with fear, suspicion, often hatred. Fear of the other. The direction here empathizes with the humans as victims. Notice how we stay mostly inside the Oval Office while everything goes down outside of it. Bewildered Secret Service agents bickering over how many assassins there are. It's not clear, we don't know how many there are. Forced only to listen as the calamity goes down right outside, which we know where it is thanks to a clever shot through the peephole to establish the geography. This silence is scary. It's like a horror film with survivors holed up against an unknown terror. Now the brief glimpses we do get of Nightcrawler, he is creeping behind a door like he's insidious. Or crouched up in the ceiling corner like, yeah, like insidious. Which I, I know came out years after, but it just goes to show how James Wan watched this and was like, Holy shit, I'm using that. Even the choral music here is Dies Irae from Mozart's Requiem, a funeral composition, originally a Gregorian chant whose theme has been worked in as the theme of doom everywhere from horror movies like The Shining to dark moments of Star Wars to even the MCU. And then finally the door swings open, showing only this blue smoke, the aftermath of dozens of teleportations by Nightcrawler, really his smoking gun. And I love the smoke design, ribbony wisps that snake in and out of space, you know, as opposed to like magic show puffs or like portals. By depicting teleportation this way, bam, you can kind of sense Kurt like reaching and bending his limbs and his tail into these various spatial access points. And it's great how they show us multiple teleports within a single cut, glorifying it. It is sexy. Ingenious casting of Alan Cumming, fluent German speaker, and Vilko, mean stage performer from Cabaret. Welcome, bienvenue. Welcome. But it ends when Nightcrawler gets shot in the arm, and notice how he lets out this canine yelp. Interesting, because in the next scene, Logan is also framed with canine imagery. The wolf he follows, and another wolf that he cross-dissolves into into the museum. Reflecting mutants as both the wild wolves that humans would hunt, and wolves that would hunt them. But now they're the evolved species that is replacing humans. One of those hunted mutants from the previous film gets respects paid here, Sabretooth. And there's a little mutant skirmish on a smaller scale. Uh, us. Right. Artie. Not here. Yeah, a little setup for a much better time and place for Artie to pull his big move. One day, someone will finish what I've started, Wolverine! One day, 
Jean Grey's telepathy overwhelms her. Busted my lip. Cancer. No! Hi. They're gonna kill him. I love that kid. Hi! Hi. But there's a very cool detail. Three of those voices you just heard were audio clips from other parts of the movie. To the shelter was a Secret Service agent from the opening scene. To the shelter. There's something in the court. To the shelter. No! Was Logan's voice later in the movie. No! 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 And They're Gonna Kill Him was Rogue's voice. They're gonna kill him! We gotta do something! They're gonna kill him! Yeah, the Phoenix Force is allowing Gene to hear voices from the future, suggesting Phoenix isn't bound by time, and that, as we'll see in Days of Future Past, consciousness-based time travel is possible in this universe. Scott confirms that Gene's subtle reaction to Magneto's mutant conversion device in the previous film is what awoke this force inside her. Ever since Liberty Island, Scott. you've been... Even different. A deleted scene would have shown the recast Jubilee sparking up her fingers. She does show up in the final scene with Charles. Instead, we just see the recast Pyro torching dudes, bringing Charles to do his favorite move. Freeze! freeze. Everybody poke a man! Poke, 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 poke. But this freeze is my favorite because it causes these humans to freeze like the early human exhibit mannequins that evolved mutants equate them to. Logan Roy himself plays Colonel Stryker, adapted from Reverend Stryker in the God Loves Man Kills story that this is adapted from, but instead of an anti-mutant pastor, this striker is kind of a Bush-era hawk using fear of the other to detain and torture. He's accompanied by Yuriko Oyama, Lady Deathstrike. And notice how he waves off the day drink because as we'll learn later, his son Jason would trap him in illusions and he's probably now terrified of his mind ever being in any kind of intoxicated or vulnerable state. And Brian Cox rips Senator Kelly mystique in disguise. I was piloting black ops missions in the jungles of North Vietnam where you were sucking on your mama's tit at Woodstock, Kelly. <laughs> now later in the series, or earlier chronologically, the alternate timeline versions of Mystique and Stryker do run into each other and fight in Vietnam. Eric reads T.H. White's The Once and Future King, the story of King Arthur extending the chess motif as this toppled king plots his comeback. At the end of the film, Charles calls it back. Have any of you read a book by an English novelist named T.H. White? But interestingly, the character seen sitting across a chessboard from Charles in this movie is Jean, an example of her rise in power and intellect, the next evolutionary threat to Charles and Eric's rule. Charles shows Logan Cerebro. Continue smoking that in here, and you'll spend the rest of your days under the belief that you're a six-year-old girl. Mm, the illusion of a young girl is exactly what Jason Stryker uses to trick Charles in the rebuilt Cerebro. But before I continue, this video is brought to you by Audible and their unmatched selection of audiobooks and other audio products. With so many of us stuck at home with libraries and schools closed, Audible has stepped up to help. They launched stories.audible.com for kids and parents stuck at home to stream great stories for free. They got C.S. Lewis, Scarlett Johansson reading Alice in Wonderland, and a whole bunch more family-friendly stuff for free during quarantine at stories.audible.com. They also launched Audible Sleep, a free service with all kinds of bedtime stories, guided meditations, and other ways that we can wrestle a good night of shut eye back from the stress monsters invading all of our homes right now. They've even expanded the amount of content available to existing members. That content includes the best selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals you can't find anywhere else. Their audiobook selection includes my old favorite, Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. I tear through that book like a hungry velociraptor. Oh, cool, cool. But, you know, one who eats great novels instead of hunters. Or finally get into that Game of Thrones, Stephen King, or Neil Gaiman audiobook you've been thinking about. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash new rock stars or text new rock stars to 500 500. Again, that's audible.com slash new rock stars or text new rock stars to 500 500 for one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Mystique accesses Stryker's computer and the names of pretty much every X-Men character or thing show up on it. First on the drop down menu, we'll go through these quick. John Allardyce, Pyro, Amara Aquila, Magma, Allison Blair, Dazzler, Sally Blevins, Skids, Braddock, Psylocke, Maria Callistanos, Feral, Cassidy 2 refers to Sean Cassidy, Banshee, and Teresa Cassidy, Siren, who we see in this movie. Lila Cheney is an associate of the X-Men in the New Mutants. Victor Creed, Sabretooth, he dead. Roberto da Costa, Sunspots, coming in New Mutants. Dane Polaris, Bobby Drake, Iceman in this movie. Fred Dukes, Blob, Angelo Espinosa, Skin. 
Kyle Gibney, Wild Child. Guthrie 2 refers to Paige, Husk, and Sam Guthrie, Cannibal, who's also coming in the New Mutants. Kenyucho Harada, Silver Samurai, Garrison Kane, Weapon X from X-Force. Remy LeBeau, Gambit. Eric Lyncher, Magneto. Artie Maddox is that fork-tongued kid. Jamie Madrox is Multiple Man. Jian Koi Man is Karma. And of course, Maximoff 2 refers to the mutants. Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, Pietro Maximoff, Quicksilver, with versions that also showed up in the MCU. Kevin McTaggart, it probably refers to Proteus, spelled a bit differently, but yeah, the son of Amora McTaggart. And Danielle Moonstar Mirage, also shown up in New Mutants, and of course, Aurora Monroe Storm. Now, the designers also snuck in the crew's faces on the guard IDs. Tom DeSanto is the executive producer. Michael Doherty and Dan Harris are co-writers. L. Donner probably refers to Lauren Schuler Donner, the co-producer. And yeah, the director, Brian Singer, who also shows up wheeling Charles in to visit Eric. But there's more Easter eggs here, because all the other desktop folders reference the rest of the X-Men universe. The drop-down menu reference most of them here, the rest. Omega Red is an X-Men villain. Franklin Richards is the son of Reed Richards and Sue Storm, super powerful Omega-level mutant. Project Wide Awake is part of the Sentinel creation. Moore Island is the mutant research center created by Moira McTaggart, Rose Byrne in first class, and it showed up in the last stand post credit scene when Charles reincarnates, kind of? Is that what he did? Root Bat Seraph is Sob Opera, Cecilia Reyes, also appearing in New Mutants, Everett Thomas, Cinch, Nicole and Claudette St. Croix are psychic twin mutants, Kurt Wagner, Nightcrawler, Raven Darkholm, that's Mystique, Vanessa Carlisle, Copycat, and then here he is, Wade Wilson, Deadpool, just waiting to make a really disappointing appearance in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Then of course, Scott Summers, Cyclops, Doug Ramsey, Cypher, Andrea and Andreas Von Strucker, those are the twins from The Gifted who become Fenris, Slack Tom Cassidy kind of makes a cameo in Deadpool 2, David North, aka Maverick in Agent Zero, Tabitha Smith is Boom Boom, Calvin Rankin is Mimic, and then Dr. Nathaniel Essex, aka Mr. Sinister, or Sinister, who was set up in the Apocalypse post credit scene. Never went anywhere with that. Mortimer Twinbee, it's Toad, he did. Ileana Rasputin, Magic, also coming to New Mutants. Shiro Yoshida, Sunfire. Guido Carosella, a strong guy. Catherine, Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat, obviously. Dr. Carl Lycos, Sauron. Now, Massachusetts Academy refers to the new site of Xavier School in the comics. Trask is Bolivar Trask, creator of the Sentinels, appeared in Days of Future Past. Gray Malkin is a mutant who gets his powers from the dark. And Zero Tolerance refers to a comic storyline where they were hunting down mutants. And then there's Alpha Flight, Beta Flight, and Gamma Flight. Those are all Canadian mutant teams. Department H, another pile, is the organization that oversees them. Jamie Braddock is Psylocke's older brother who can manipulate reality. Danger Room, you know this one. This is the X-Men simulation training chamber. Forge is a tech-savvy weapons expert in the X-Men comics. Brotherhood is Magneto's crew, Weapon X, so Striker's operation. Legacy was a virus released by Strife against mutants in the comics. And then the Morlocks, those are the underground meeting group. <sighs> Okay, outside the church where Storm and Jean find Kurt is graffiti reading Nature Laughs Last. Kind of a reflection how, despite humans' efforts to stamp out mutants, natural selection finds a way. Kurt snaps at them in German. Yeah, his German translates to, Get out! I'm a minion of the devil! I'm the spawn of evil! Stryker's unit attacks the school at nighttime. Another amazing sequence that heightens fear of the other. After empathetically relating to the fear of the humans in the opening, now we are afraid of how that fear turns state forces into night monsters, terrifying kids. Wolverine goes berserk in the best possible way. You picked the wrong house, Bob. <laughs> We see Kitty Pride in action, shifting through her bed and the walls. Siren wakes up, sounds the alarm. Colossus meddles up, wrecks some dudes. Bobby forms an ice wall between Logan and Stryker. Like in the opening scene, Logan is iced out of his past. Meanwhile, Mystique seduces the guard. On the TV is a sighting of Dr. Hank McCoy, Beast, before he was recast as Kelsey Grammer in The Last Stand. Also on that talk show is Mr. Shaw, referring to Sebastian Shaw, leader of the Hellfire Club. Kevin Bacon played him first class. Now notice how the bathroom is pretty big for a bar. That's because this set was actually built for the first film when they were going to do a flashback to Scott Summer's origin destroying his high school bathroom. That scene was later reshot for X-Men Apocalypse. Now, Stryker is exploiting his son, Jason Stryker, a telepathic mutant that Charles could not help. So he would toy with our minds, projecting visions and scenarios into our brains. My wife, she took a power drill to her left temple in an attempt to bore the images out. Jason is based on Jason Wingard, aka the mutant mastermind with similar powers. Bobby's family cat licks Logan's claws. Actually, listen when he retracts them. Yeah, it's a subtle off-screen disappointment from the kitty. Now, Bobby comes out as a mutant to his parents, a metaphor for gay teens coming out. That idea of homophobia versus pride runs throughout these films. It's just that it's not easy when you want to be closer to someone, but you can't. 
When did you first know you were a... A uh, mutant? Have you tried not being a mutant? Then why not stay in disguise all the time? Because we shouldn't have to. In 2015, Marvel Comics established Bobby Drake as gay. Magneto's prison escape is set to Mozart. <laughs> Sucks the metal from the blood. And notice how he's smiling gleefully as he floats on that disc, bullets those balls in the guard booth. This contrast of classical music and horrible gore was inspired directly from Hannibal Lecter's escape in Silence of the Lambs. The pilot ordering them to land is Captain Raygun McClay. Nod to Captain Raymond Raygun Lie in Battlestar Galactica. Nightcrawler teleports Rogue back into a crashing jet, but luckily Magneto catches them. When will these people learn how to fly? Yeah, kind of a meta joke about how in the comics and in the animated series Rogue, Jean Grey, they fly all the time. So does Storm, but in this movie it's only really Storm. She only really flies when like the storm winds will levitate her. Now, they end up using Mystique to pose as Wolverine, but Stryker ain't fooled. The one thing I know better than anyone is my own work. Seal the room, shoot it. Yeah, I love this. Stryker can tell just by Mystique's calm confidence that this ain't the same unsettled lab break that he saw in the mansion earlier. And as a past victim of his son's illusion, Stryker is just really sharp when it comes to knowing what's the real thing. Mystique flips him off with a backward slide, a move she learned from Logan in the first film, and she morphs so fast that even we're surprised. Could be anybody. Anybody? <gasps> what? Yeah, Brian Cox did all that. I love it. And then Mystique slips in some sass. Can you shut it down from here? No. Come this little time. Not without us. Mm, Jean's telepathy is leading her to suspect Eric and Mystique have ulterior plans for Cerebro. As they do. And when they save the mutant captives, notice how the before angle shows Kurt already standing in the shadows of that containment cell before his character teleports in. Clearly they planned to digitally remove him from the shot, but maybe they didn't think he would be visible, but he is. Logan discovers his old Weapon X lab where he was experimented on with x-ray scans showing other past test subjects, mutants we know. The skull with the spikes belongs to Quill, who arrives in the next film. You can also see the hand of Lady Deathstrike, but there's also this wing that belongs to Angel, whose feather wings are replaced by metallic ones. Wolverine and Lady Deathstrike have this nasty fight until he plugs her with molten adamantium. And sadly, notice how Stryker's brainwash serum fades from her eyes at the last second. And briefly, you can see this lucid regret as she looks at Logan as adamantium pours out like tears. It's tragic, but it reminds Logan that the real enemy, not his fellow mutants, but us. You us, Murph. Stryker and Jason use Charles and Cerebro to target all the mutants. Now, deleted scenes here would have shown this movie's Hank Coy in agony transforming into his beast form, as well as Gambit playing cards with his energy flaring up suddenly. Sadly, we never got to see those. But then Magneto and Mystique try to reverse it on the humans. But Storm and Nightcrawler break Charles free, but notice how they leave poor Jason behind. Like Eureka, another exploited mutant casualty. But the dam breaks and Jean knows it was her powers that damaged it before and that she's the only one who can save them. And the way Charles has in the past used his psionic powers to talk through people, Jean now proves her alpha status by doing it through him. This is the only way. Later in the final shot, Charles will sense Jean's ongoing presence outside the window and she further takes away the alpha status by quoting Charles's opening words from the first film over the final shots of the phoenix rising from under the water. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. But because this battle was sparked by fear of the other, in order to extinguish it, they must return to where that first blood was drawn, the Oval Office, where Charles echoes the Senator Kelly Kitty Pride reference that first fueled this anxiety. Just say I know a little girl who can walk through walls. The first film ended with a chess match between mutants. Now Charles pivots and signals the game is now between humans and X-Men united. The next move is yours. Join our future weekly watch-alongs on our official Discord server by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash newrockstars. Follow me on e Instagram at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe for breakdowns of everything you love. And let us close with what the rest of America probably saw when the president's live feed went dead there. 